so you want to sound like a civil protection unit or a combine grunt from Half-Life Alex. Well, this is a tutorial for you. Welcome. If you're still a novice at FL Studio, then I highly suggest that you take a look at the tutorial that I made involving the basics as well as some troubleshooting tips involving using FL Studio as a voice changer. If you've already watched that tutorial, then let's begin. Before we start dealing with our plugins, we have to first download a couple of optional plugins first. The first optional plugin is something called GForm. All we have to do is type in GForm plugin, and you'll be able to see the website right here. The link will also be posted in the description below. Very simple. All we have to do is head to the download page, select our download, and then download GForm. Once you download your file, it'll be given to you in a zip, extract that, and you'll be given a gform.dll file. Copy or cut it, and you want to take it to your directory for FL Studio. For me, it is my one terabyte solid state drive, or my E drive. Take it to image line. FL Studio for me is in this file here. Head to plugins, and then drop it here. The other program that you want is something called Vocal Synth. While optional, Vocal Synth 2 will give your program the little extra kick that it could use. But completely optional, you do not need to get this. This is a paid program. There is a trial available. However, that trial is not very good and will only last you 10 days. Once the 10 days expire, you won't be able to use it properly. The process here is much of the same. Download your zip file, extract it, and put it into its proper directory. Once you do that, you want to head to the top left to your options, head to your manage plugin setting, and then once you find this page, you want to add your plugin path. If you put it in properly, it should just be in your E drive located at your plugins. Not a problem. All you have to do then is find installed plugins. Once you press that button, FL Studio will look through all of your plugins that you have installed and properly add them to your list. Once complete, you'll be able to see exactly where it is. With that all out of the way, let's get started with the voice changer itself. You may notice here, I'm only using one slot here. What gives? Well, patcher here is not your average plugin. You see, what patcher does is, it allows me to have more than just 10 slots active at once. As you can see here, this is a bit more complicated than just having one simple channel open. Pay attention to these yellow lines. As you can see, the path diverges three times. One part of it goes up, and then it splits in the middle, and then there's also a diverging path on the bottom. Not only that, but there's also a path that splits temporarily and comes back later on. Think of it this way. Each deviation acts as one track in your mixer viewer, as in the first track up here represents this first route. The second route, as seen in the middle here, represents this second route, and the third path, located here, represents this optional route. I'll be going over each route separately before we move on to this area here. Before we begin, make sure your microphone is set to in one, and your external input is set to either when armed or on. And remember, if you can't hear your voice, make sure you press the button in the bottom left here, labeled arm disc recording. Now, let's get started. As we go through the top line here, I'm going to be turning on every single effect as seen at once, so you can hear exactly the difference that they make. Let's start with the Sound Goodizer. The Sound Goodizer here is a very simple tool. Simply raise this knob to maximum and keep it on mode A. Once activated, it'll make your voice sound like this. Sound Goodizer is a program that is meant to raise your volume and increase the bass in your voice, essentially doing exactly what it says, making your voice sound good. Up next, we have the effector. It's going to make our voice sound like this. Our settings are as follows. A gain level of 100%, our X parameter set to 20, our Y parameter set to 16, make sure that bypass is turned off, your dry and wet mix to 100%, your setting to lo-fi, your mod rate to one quarter, your mod shape to sine, your tempo reduce to 0%, and that should be effector. Up next is your limiter. Set a gate of 9 decibels, a release time of 0 milliseconds, a gain time of completely 0, and a noise threshold of negative 25 decibels. Once all activated, it should sound like this. Let's turn all those off for now and head to our G-Form. 
This is the first part of the deviating path. Here's an example of what G-Form does for your voice. As you can tell, my voice sounds lower and lower and lower the lower that my percentage goes. Or it could even go higher, 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 as high as you could possibly go. Like I said though, mine stays at negative two. And for pitch, you could either raise it so that your pitch goes up, or you could change it so your pitch goes down. Personally, I found my perfect level at negative two formant, but your voice is completely different from mine. Feel free to tune this one to your liking. If you don't like G-Form or downloading things from online that you are not sure of, or it's simply too hard for you to take a DLL file into your plugins, there's a very simple workaround. Simply right click, you can add another plugin, and this one will be called Pitch Shifter. Now, this program is essentially the same exact thing as G-Form here, but it's from FL Studio, and it's also a bit more stable than G-Form is. Pitch Shifter here is only a trial, meaning that you have to buy it separately along with the producer edition of FL Studio. You can still use it in trial mode, but if you do, none of your settings will ever save. You'll have to change it every time by yourself. Let's move on to the Fruity Parametric EQ. Here, our settings are as follows. Our main level is set to six decibels. Our first band here is set to high pass, steep eight, a hertz rate of 345, and a percentage of 55%. Our last band here, band seven, is set to low pass, steep eight, 3385 hertz, and 55%. Alone, it sounds like this. When each program so far is put together, it sounds like this. We're not done yet though. As we move on here, our compressor is set to a threshold of zero decibels, a ratio of one to one, a gain of zero, an attack of 15 milliseconds, a release of 200 milliseconds, and type set to hard. Once that's done, you send it to this compressor here. We'll come back to this area shortly. When all together at once, this is what the entire first route sounds like altogether. Returning to the route after the parametric EQ here, we have our vocodex. This here program is something that makes your voice a bit more robotic than usual. It's a little bit hard to explain, but our settings are as follows. We want to have our wet level to 18 decibels, our sound goodizing level to 100%, our modular pass-through level to zero decibels, as well as our high-pass frequency of 5785 hertz, our low-pass frequency to 503, our carrier pass-through level to set to none, our carrier pass-through low-pass frequency to 500 hertz, and our carrier added noise level to zero with a high-pass frequency of 5785. Make sure that in your contour section, you have contour from carrier turned off, your consonants, mod, and noise buttons to be activated, draft, and threaded to be activated as well. Ensure that sidechain input numbers are both zero, and your left-right encoding is turned off. Hold time of zero milliseconds, attack time of zero milliseconds, and release time of zero milliseconds. Ensure minimum save times is on. Make sure hold mode is peak, attack curve is one, release curve is one, order is set to one, filter flatness is set to zero, Bandwidth of 106%, modular bandwidth multiplier of 1, your modular pitch shift set to negative 1200, and your modular unison shift of 100%. Make sure you have your modular unison order set to 5. Last but not least, your band count should be set to 47. Our fruity phaser here is set to a sweep of maximum 1 hertz, a minimum depth of 0 hertz, a maximum depth of one, a frequency range of small, a stereo phase of zero, number of stages set to 10, feedback of 0.3, a dry wet value set to 100% wet, and out gain set to zero decibels. All alone by itself, it should sound like this. Uh, 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 uh. Up next, we'll head to our fruity parametric EQ. This is the last one you're gonna need before you head to a limiter. We want to have a main level of zero decibels. Our first band is set to high pass, steep eight, a hertz rate of 144, and a percentage of 55%. Our last band is set to low pass, steep eight, 
1813 Hz, and 55%. Alone, on its own, it should sound like this. Last but not least, our filter. We want to have a gain of 0 decibels, a saturation of 0 decibels, a loudness threshold, a compression threshold of 19 decibels, a compression radio of 2 to 1, and no limiter. You want to have a ceiling of negative 12 decibels, and that should be it for this limiter. With everything activated at once, your second bed, your second set of beds sounds like this. Our third and optional area lies here. It also relies on Vocal Synth Pro. Not the trial version, but Pro. Once we click into it, we're greeted with multiple different filters here. Because it's optional for the grunt vocoder, I am not going to go over every single option. However, if you need to pause the video in order to copy every little thing that I have here, feel free to do so. Remember, Vocal Synth is only optional here. Once you've completed Vocal Synth Pro, we're going to head over to Fruity Parametric EQ. We have our first band set to high pass, steep 8, a hertz rate of 216, and a volume level of 61%. And our last band here set to low pass, steep 8, a hertz rate of 1028 hertz, and a percentage of 61%. Alone and on its own, it should make you sound like so. Once complete with all three branches, they all come back together to one fruity compressor. This compressor here is set to a threshold of negative 40 decibels, a ratio of 18 to 1, a gain of 25 decibels, an attack of 35 milliseconds, a release of 4,000 milliseconds, and a type set to vintage. As you can see here, the paths deviate once again. If we go to the lower path here, we see a program called Fruity Fast Distort. Our settings for the Fruity Fast Distort are as follows. We have a preamp of 33%, a threshold of 100%, a distortion type set to B, our mix level set to 100%, and our post gain set to 100%. Alone, Fruity Fast Distort sounds like so. Yes, very hard on the ears, but you won't be hearing this the whole time. Don't worry about it. Up next in the lower path, we have our last program here, called the Fruity Squeeze. Square Eye Steps are set to 4, Puncher is set to Preserve 2, Impact 1, Relation 0, Amount 0. Our filter is activated and set to High Pass, a frequency cutoff of 36%, and a filter resonance of 71%. Our filter position is set to Positive, and our mix is set to 15% Dry and 85% wet, and our gain is set to 75%. Alone, it sounds like this. You might not be able to understand it at first, but we'll see how it sounds afterwards. Once you finish Fruity Squeeze, it goes into Fruity Stereo Shaper. But be careful, because this path here is only set to 25% volume input. All you have to do is click the arrow, and then lower it from 100% default to 25% all the way down here. Our last plugin in this entire group is the Fruity Stereo Shaper. What it does is it changes the stereo sound that we're getting from our vocoder, and it changes it so that the waveform is only coming out of one monotone channel. In order to receive this middle monotone sound, all you have to do is right click on one of these arrows, head to mixing, and then choose the option mid. You'll see that that's the exact setting that we have here. Once that's done, congratulations! You have the Combine Grunt and Civil Protection Officer Voice Changer from Half-Life Alex. Now, in order to give you a couple of examples of exactly what we sound like, I'm going to be doing a couple of lines from the game Half-Life Alex. Call out, Delta Echo 7-9 Alpha 2-1-0. Confirmed. Call out, Delta Echo 7-9 or Alpha 2 one zero. 0 Confirmed. Echo out.
Overwatch is requesting all units refresh and resolve. Cognitive dissonance will not be tolerated. Negative. Memories included. Update is live in T minus three seconds. Dissonance resolved. Stabilization team holding position. Life is at 73. Audible sets. 50. Overwatch confirms HPD is perimeter inbound. Stay alert. Stabilization team is holding position. Life is 73. Audible 15. Overwatch confirms HVT is perimeter inbound. Last but not least, ensure that you head to Options, Audio Settings, and head to your ASIO panel, and ensure that your settings are set properly. Your input should be set to whatever your main microphone is, and your output should be set to Virtual Audio Cable Input. Once there, you have to head to your Control Panel, go to Hardware and Sound, Sound, and please ensure that your default recording device is set to Virtual Audio Cable Output. Doing so will allow all games from Steam to allow you to speak by using your cable output. But remember, any other devices or programs that you have that are set as default, you're going to have to specify that your main microphone that you use for communication is whatever your main microphone is. Because if it's currently set to default, it will automatically default to your audio cable output. And that should be everything. That is the 2025 edition of the Civil Protection or Combine Grunt Voice Changer from Half-Life Alex. Any of the websites that we use to download these plugins, as well as the playlist involving multiple voice changers, will be linked in the description below. I thank you for sticking around this far, and I wish you luck in your ventures.